what we're going to be looking at here is a long-term liability and specifically looking at a bond issued using the straight line method here for amortizing this bond and we're going to be looking at both uh, issuing it here at a discount or at a premium. So this is going to be our example here. Corporation A issues $800,000 worth of bonds here at 10%. They're 20-year bonds on 1120X1 at 102 here. And what that means is it's 102% here of the par or the face value. So a face value of our bonds is going to be $800,000 and whatever denomination they come in, in $10,000 denominations or $100,000, but our total amount here is $800,000. Now, the interest is payable semi-annually here on the first of the year here in 1-1 one, one, and also here on July 1st, semi-annually twice a year here. So Corporation A uses the straight line method here for amortization uh, for either the bond premium or the bond this discount here. So uh, what are, when we're using the straight line method, we're amortizing at a constant amount each interest period here. In this case, we're going to have 20-year bonds. We pay interest uh, semi-annually or twice a year here. So we're going to have 40 periods here that we're going to be amortizing. So let's look, and we're just going to be looking here at the first year here, and we're, you can from this you can determine what it would be for the next 20 years here. So we're going to record it here at the issue date here on 1-1 one, one, and then we're going to be looking at 7-1 here in interest payment date and also a year-end um, payment date here or uh, accruing our year-end interest here on 1231. And we'll start here where we where the bond sells for more than the face value that is it sells at a premium here. So what we have to do is we have to set up these accounts. We're going to have a cash account, we're going to have some liability accounts here for this bonds payable and we're going to have a premium account here and then we're also going to have some interest expense here on this bond. So let's just step through it here. Step uh, starting out with the issue date here on 1-1. One, one. So what we were talking about we issued $800,000 dollars worth of bonds here at their face value or their par value 800,000 times 102 percent. So what we're going to receive here is more than the $800,000 worth of bonds that we issued. We're going to receive in cash $816,000. Simply the $800,000 here of par face value times 102 percent. But uh, we're going to have the, and this is on 1-1. One, one. Now we have to set up this bonds payable liability account here on our balance sheet. So we would credit that here for $800,000 because this is what we're going to have to pay off here when these bonds come due here 20 years down the road here. So, and because we received more cash here than what the face amount of the bonds were, we have to set up this premium account here. And that works uh, again that aligns here with our bonds payable. So we have a premium here of account on 1-1 one, one, or January 1st when we issued them here of $16,000. That is um, the $800,000 face value or par value of the bonds plus the $16,000 here, uh, the premium amount here on these bonds payable here. That equals the cash that we received here of $816,000. So you can see this uh, cash amount we received is broken down between the bonds payable their face value when they come due here or their par value and this premium account here of $16,000. Now we come down the road here and we're going to have to make our first payment here on July 1st of the year here. So what we would do here and we'll just step through that here. This is really a basic example here. So we're going to the interest is paid is going to be here on 7-1 for this first premium. Nothing more than $800,000 face value times that 10% interest rate times six of the 12 months or half a year here, six months. That's going to give us a cash amount here, uh, reduce our cash here by $40,000. Now what we have to do at this time is we have to amortize this premium down each time we make one of those payments here and we have to also recognize interest expense on the bond here so for amortizing our premium remember we started out with 16,000 here in our premium account so we would amortize it down each interest period here nothing more than taking a 16,000 divided by 40 periods that's going to give us amortization amount here of $400 per period here on 7-1 so we would uh, reduce our premium am uh, premium account here we'd reduce it or debit it here for 400 dollars here 
on 7-1 for that period's amortization of the bond. And then we would go and we'd recognize interest expense here on 7-1 on our income statement here. Debit that here for $39,600. So what we have here is just how it's broken down between the interest and our premium account here interest is on our income statement premium on our balance sheet we have that semi-annual payment here of forty thousand dollars so what that is really broken down here where we got thirty nine thousand six hundred dollars goes to the interest expense here and then four hundred reduces our premium on our bonds payable here total amount is forty thousand dollars you can see here our interest expense here of forty thousand dollars was reduced by the amount of uh, premium that we recognize. Now comes along our next pay, our next period at the end of the year here when we have to accrue this um, um, uh, interest expense and this premium amount here. Remember we don't pay off until uh, 1 1 here that would be the right after the first of the, the year here. The next year we'd be paying here on January 1st our, our $40,000 premium here. So what we would do here, again, we just amortize that amount, constant amount here, same amount, $400 here, and we're going to recognize our interest expense here, $39,600. Same uh, method here, using the straight line method, we have a constant amount each period here. So as we step through this bond here in the next uh, 20 years, we would continue on recognizing that same amount of interest expense here, $39,600, and then we'd amortize our uh, premium amount down here uh, by that amount here of of four hundred dollars until we get down to we uh, a zero balance here in our premium account but because this was at the end of the year here where we had to uh, accrue this interest expense in this premium account here we have to set up this interest payable on our bonds here credit that here for forty thousand dollars since we actually didn't pay the cash out all we do is we have to accrue both our int interest expense here and our income statement for the period here and also our premium on our bonds payable or reduce our bonds payable. So this uh, forty thousand dollars here, that's really our SAM annual payment, eight hundred thousand ten percent times six months here. So um, this interest is remember it's only it the payments are on one one and seven one, but at the end of the year here on twelve thirty one we have to accrue this payment that's going to come due here on one one. Okay, so we've went through this here. The point that we want to get out of this is when we talk about uh, selling it had a premium. It's more than what the face amount of the bonds are and when and it's quoted in this like 102. Just remember that's 102 percent here of the face value. And then just remember you have to set up this interest payable account here if you didn't actually pay out the payment but you have to recognize or uh, recognize the interest expense for the year here and just remember it's broken down here between this interest expense is really a component here that semi-annual payment whatever that is less uh, and then you would break it down here you would whatever the semi-annual payment is subtract out your premium account here because you have to your debits have to equal your credits whereas just looking here in our last amount we had a debit here of 400 for our amortization of the premium um, debit here of 396 uh, 3900 39600 here on our interest expense and then we would have had a credit here of forty thousand dollars here interest payable okay so that's how that works all right let's move on here and look at the um, Discount here, the discount here. So same example here. Corporation A issues eight hundred thousand ten percent twenty year bond here, and it's going to be at ninety seven. So what that means is we're going to take ninety percent, ninety seven percent here of the par of the face value of eight hundred thousand dollars, and we're going to go through same example here on our payout date. So this is where the bond sells for less than the face value that sells at a discount. So what we would do is set up our accounts. We're going to have this cash account, bonds payable, and then we're going to set up a discount here to bonds payable, and then we're going to also have some interest expense and also an interest payable on this. So starting out with our issue date here on 1-1. One, one. So when we said 97%, you're going to get 97% here of the face value of $800,000. So the cash amount we're going to get is less than what our bonds payable is. That works out to $776,000. That's when we issued here on 1-1. One, one. So that's the cash we're going to get here in 1-1. One, one. And then 
uh, we set up our bonds payable the same amount here. We're gonna, it's, they're going to be due here at $800,000 in 20 years down the road. And now we set up this discount to bonds payable here. Now remember, this is going to be a contra account to our bonds payable here. It just works in the opposite direction here. So what we have to do is we have to amortize this, uh, this bond when it gets down to seven hundred and seventy six thousand dollars so we're going to actually pay eight hundred thousand dollars but for our interest expense that we're going to accrue here we have to set up this discount here so what we would do here on the discount uh, all we do is we take uh, well that is here the seven hundred and seventy six thousand dollars here and then the discount would we, we you have to credit here of eight hundred thousand dollars and then we got the seven hundred and seventy six thousand dollar debit amount here so the balancing debit amount here would be twenty four thousand dollars in our discount to bonds payable remember that's a contract account here that's on one one here now we have to amortize this down and we have to recognize the interest expense each period here. So just looking at our 7-1 date here when we'd actually be paying out that first payment here, we'd credit or reduce our cash amount here by $40,000. And then we're, we have to amortize our discount down here. So what we would do is, okay, remember there's $24,000 here at a discount that has to be amortized over 40 periods. That's going to divide that out. You're going to get uh, $600 per period here. Constant amount. Remember this is straight line method. So we would credit or reduce our discount payable by six hundred dollars here. And then our we would reckon and this is on one seven one here. And then our interest expense here on our income statement, we would debit that here for forty thousand six hundred dollars. That's simply taking that semi annual payment here of forty thousand dollars here and we have to break it down here. We have to actually increase our interest expense by the amount of the discount here to come up with our balancing amount. So our interest expense becomes the discount amount here plus that payment so the discount so the interest expense forty thousand six hundred dollars less the discount here of six hundred gives us that forty thousand uh, dollar here or semi-annual payment of forty thousand dollars here now and the same amount here at the end of the year here on 1231 because we're not actually paying out the interest payment until one one here we have to accrue this interest payable we credit that as an interest payable here on our balance sheet for forty thousand dollars here and then we would also have that uh, discount or bonds payable here uh, credit that here for six hundred dollars and then the debit amount here would go to interest expense here forty thousand six hundred dollars so again this this interest payable that was nothing more than our semi-annual payment here eight hundred thousand ten percent over that six months here and we had to accrue that here because we didn't actually pay it out in cash we accrued it because the payment is going to come due here uh, just to follow uh, in the following year here on one one here so you can see what we just what we want to bring away from this here is remember with the um, selling at a discount and it's quoted here at 97 or 97 percent take that times the face amount here of the bonds or the par value of the bonds so that's going to get the amount of cash that you're going to get here in this case it was $776,000 and then our bonds payable they're going to be $800,000 here that's what's going to have to be paid out over those 20 years and then we have to amortize it using that straight line method simply the uh, discount amount that we calculated here divided by the number of periods that's going to get the amortization per period here so um, what we want to do here is we would continue on this here for the next 20 years for each uh, semi-annual payment you've got to recognize your discount amount here and then also your interest expense remember your interest expense that you're recognizing income statement is actually that payment that you're making plus this discount here and you can see it through your debit and credit balances here so your credit of a discount here plus whatever payable here either in cash or interest payable uh, credit amount here has to balance with the interest expense here uh, debit amount here and just when you get through this remember at the end of the 20th year you would just credit out or you would debit out uh, your bonds payable here by eight hundred thousand dollars and then you'd have to pay that cash amount here uh, credit that here for eight hundred thousand dollars so this takes care of both the uh, um, bonds uh, selling at a premium here and also selling at a discount and just using this straight line method here for amortizing out the um, either your discount premium or, or your discount or your premium on your bonds payable